Welcome to a Drop Tent Media Production. The Porcupine with Adam Nutter. What is up, everybody? Welcome again to another episode of The Porcupine with me, Adam Nutter. What's up? Thanks for coming and joining me. Uh, real quick to start, you can buy merch for this fucking show. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Go to uh, droptent.com slash store. You can buy merch for The Porcupine and uh, all the other podcasts I'm on to. But if you want to support The Porcupine especially, it's actually a great shirt uh, drawn by Neil Wood. It's a fucking awesome little logo of my uh, alternate logo. Um, go check it out. So uh, droptent.com slash store for that. And for me, again, uh, pro coming up, stand-up-wise, yeah, fuck, I'll just plug the pop-in show. So September 11th, again, two shows, 7.30, 9.30, Chalfont, PA, right outside of Philly. Get your tickets, they sell out. You, again, you can't DM me the day of, like, can I get tickets? No, we don't have the room, they sell out. I say this every fucking month. Go buy your fucking tickets, droptent.com slash events. Uh, September 11th is the next show at the pop-in. Come on out uh all right that is it for plugs up front guys i'm super excited about my guest tonight he is easily one of the uh fucking coolest libertarian voices out there and definitely the best libertarian artist out there uh give it up for my man and also a great trucker too top loss to everybody <laughs> <laughs> what's up doggy thank, thank you for having me man no, this is a it's a long time coming <laughs> yeah i know right it's do like you have so many people you want on, and obviously, I don't want to saturate. Like, I don't want to drop like fucking a hundred goddamn thousand podcasts in a week, you know. So <laughs> I I try to spread it out, but I also yeah. like I like I like so many people. I want so many people to come on and hang out and talk. Yeah, no, you know? it's like, I'm talking like, about the rescheduling. I think we like this is like the third time. I think we finally made it happen oh, after that like too. three. Yeah, holy shit, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Last time I right, I was away and I bought I, like I bought my laptop and all this shit in the microphone and then i was like where's adam <laughs> He's like, yeah, adam's on tour <laughs> it's all good man that's right, we're here dude. now right i am here now dude it's fucking we're doing it that's all that matters we're fucking doing it <laughs> we Hell are yeah. doing it uh again thanks for coming on that's awesome uh but like i, I always ask a question to everybody who comes on for the first time uh what brought you to the liberty movement like what the fuck was it that sent you over to the side of no return of you know i'm done with the duopoly i'm done with the fucking politics I, I just care about freedom and liberty like what was the moment or what was it yeah i mean uh it's probably the the short answer is probably like what most people my age or in in our time frame will say is like dave smith davy boy smith but the, the long story is uh i wasn't really political at all I, I, you know i'm from coney island brooklyn and uh i'm spanish so by default i guess uh we're just like Democrats, you know, my family, we, we, you know, New York Democrats, that's what we think that we are. And uh, 2015, 2016 kind of opened my eyes politically, because there was a lot of shaking up. And, you know, that that had a lot to do with, uh, with Donald Trump. You know, I know that libertarians don't quite like him, but he served as a pretty good red pill to, to uh, a lot of people that I know. And, and from there, they kind of uh, fractionated in different areas. Some have, you know, they whatever. Uh, so I, I started paying attention to politics and, and then I started seeing like how people I respected, uh, respected. Yeah. They're, uh, they were like losing their minds, orange man, bad, you know? And then you see, you see what's going on, uh, socially that I've been, I was, I was having like these weird feelings socially that, uh, that you see everywhere from TV shows to, you know, popular culture to, to just about everything. And it all kind of tied into this weird moment. So I started paying attention. I started, I, I thought maybe I was a Republican, right? Because if I'm not left, then maybe I'm right. So I was like, I did that for a little while. I discovered Jordan Peterson, which is why you got the, uh, you know, the top lobster right there. That's a, uh, in his book, uh, he talks about the dominance hierarchies and uh, the dopamine system that the lobsters run on. And I just thought that that was the coolest shit. So I was like, I'm the top lobster. I'm the one that's going to win the fights and we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to do it that way. But, uh, so th that kind of stuck. But anyway, um, yeah, we're, uh, I guess I was, I was leaning right for a long time. And then one day I was walking my dog, I was listening to Joe Rogan talk to, I don't know, Ben Shapiro or some shit. And 
the next episode played or the next clip played and it was you know davy boy smith so i was like who is who's this faggot because <laughs> he, he immediately comes on and he's talking about like uh he's talking about libertarian ideals but it's it immediately uh appears left to me because if, if you're on the right and then you start getting uh like the sense, uh, the the sense of of what he was talking about, which was like maybe civil liberties or something like something socially. So I was like, ah, I don't know how I feel about it, but let me listen to him. And I listened. Maybe it was a twenty minute clip, and I was like, fuck, that's it. There goes uh everything that I thought is wrong, <laughs> and now I have to discover that. So that was like, I don't know, three years ago, or whatever. And from there, it's been a uh, just a learning lesson of reading books from. Hayek to Rothbard to obviously, I mean, malice and, you know, and then on Twitter, radicalizing you further, Pete and Jonas, who you just had on. And uh, it, here I am falling into this odd space. <laughs> Dude, we really are a fucking weird group. <laughs> like I see yeah. all the time. Like we get made fun of all the time. Like we're a bunch of incels, <laughs> fucking weirdos. <laughs> like a bunch of, like we kind of are, but I guess what the fringe, I guess is if anything, like once, you know, you're done with the middle, you're like, well, fuck that shit and, and and you when you're such a branch out you start to see more and more like-minded people and like all right you know i'm not so weird like you know there's this person thinks like me this person thinks like me but like, a lot of also people especially like my field or like comedy or entertainment that like won't say how they really feel mm, yeah because mm -hmm. they're afraid you know like but i do have not a lot but i've had comics come up to me and be like yo what's what's with that liberty stuff like they have it's you know they have talked to me like asked me about it for sure yeah, uh, not, not a lot, my, but like I would say at least a handful. Which yeah, uh, my, my Facebook experience is the same kind of deal. You know, my, my family is kind of like, what what are you talking about for the last five years, Danny? Because I'm just shit posting like crazy memes. <laughs> but it's all applicable to all the stuff that's going on. And then once they start to sense the cracks in the matrix, I've gotten maybe 10, 15 messages from people that are like, you wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. They don't like my shit. I don't see them commenting. I don't even see them posting. But they'll be like, hey, uh, I saw this meme. Is that true? Or they'll ask me the economy. What, you know, like just questions like that. And I was like, ha, huh, I got you, motherfucker. Like that's so I, I sparked your interest. There's a lot of people, man. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's you get, always got to try to find like that common ground with somebody when you're trying to like uh, get them over. That's what we were talking about last night on a, a, a Jacob Winograd's podcast. We were like, uh if you find like an issue someone hates like they're like fucking i don't know let's just say for easy purposes we'll say taxes right but let's say it's republicans <laughs> like these fucking taxes are too high like hey man you know who hates taxes libertarian like we do <laughs> like you know like oh yeah you're like yeah <laughs> like you don't hit them with like the wars like they're like what the fuck like, like it's like too much like I, it's best yeah. to find that one person's gripe and then and then try to parallel that with something we have going on yeah, you don't bring up Social Security to like old Republicans who hate taxes. You know, <laughs> right. you got you got to ease them in and then get them get them questioning like, well, what's this about? I see you over here with a you're a libertarian or whatever it is. I guess I classify myself more of an anarchist, but yeah, people definitely have been asking questions, especially the last year. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I would definitely say more anarchist also, but it's it's like that's it's easier just to say libertarian, right? Especially when you're talking like the groups of people who don't understand the fucking classes of stuff. It's like once you start to go, I'm actually a minarchist or I'm an anarchist. Like I don't know what the fuck that means, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm a libertarian. You're like I don't know what that means either. <laughs> you're like fuck yeah, <laughs> you know. What I'm saying? I I've I've been a. I don't know what to call myself. I uh, on my on my Twitter page in the bio it it says uh lobster. Like I'm a lobster. I live under the sea and my pronouns are lob slash stuff. That's like, I, I'm not going to tell you that I'm libertarian or anarchist, but I think, I don't know, may, maybe, uh, maybe we should start uh, normalizing th the word anarchist to people rather than them thinking it's a anti for something like that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you're not wrong. I think education ed or educating people, I would say is definitely part of it. And yeah, it's definitely, I guess, not the best idea to shy away from any type of, possible conflict you might have because that doesn't grow the conversation either yeah for sure but yeah but it, it, it's just a jarring word right when you go yeah. i'm an anarchist they go all right so you want to like throw molotov cocktails at tanks and you're like no <laughs> yes oh actually no <laughs> well i mean yes but you know what i'm saying like that's not in minecraft <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes 
Yeah. <laughs> in Minecraft. <laughs> uh, but it's like, no. And then you explain to him more of what it, and like, you know, I, I'm like, no, you still want capitalism and stuff. And like, oh, okay. And like, you have to break it down. But, but it's just that word is like, a, it's like, a, it's like a scary word to people. Like, uh oh. Yeah. It, you know, Michael Malice kind of, I explained it to one of my coworkers because I was, he, he's one of the people that I'll just tell very bluntly, like what it is, because he can handle it for the most part. And uh, Michael Malice, and he made an analogy saying that, uh, like one of the most anarchist things that we do every day is just language. There's tons of languages and none of them are created by the state or mandated. Well, soon they will be mandated how we speak. And then there's different dialects from like Ebonics to accents. Like I have, you know, different phrases that we use and that's all anarchy because it comes up naturally. We agree upon it uh, individually between each other and we all know what we're, what it means, but there's nobody coercing you to use it. So I explained it to him like that and I, I could see the little, uh, you know, the, the gears ticking in his head there. So, yeah, I, I guess it depends. You know, I'll, I'll pick my uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll pick my targets to see how deep I want to go with them if I'm even in the mood to like explain. But <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah. It, 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 that's the thing, too, is like it is good. It does get tiresome at points and times. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't want to like go over the roads again, dude. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, I gotta talk about. Yeah. Saying. It's like I don't want to talk about like privatizing the police or whatever the fuck. Like, it's like it's like it's I don't know. I just get tired of it. But then like it's important to, if you people ask. I, I, yeah, I, you know I, I <laughs> that's been a fault of mine because at least with people that I know personally, not online, I have just been ignoring them and like working working at a fever pitch on my art because uh, I don't know. It looks like shit's gonna hit. Shit is hitting the fan. So I'm like I have to start. You know, I'm not a fan of Vin Armani, but the build the arc thing, I think, is a, a very good idea. So I'm like, I have to start building my own arc. And uh, it's, you know, if you haven't figured it out by now and you're resisting, you know, they've made fun of me before and all of this stuff. So, yeah, well, hey, man, <laughs> we're here now. Yeah. Take your take your vaccine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about speaking about fucking art. Uh, again, I absolutely love your art. I'm I'm behind you right now. <laughs> <In art form. laughs> it's wonderful. Look, look at that. <laughs> look, Vanna White, me, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but like, were you always in, like an art guy, or you just something like also you that came into later in life? Because I know, like, again, my buddy Neil, like, he's always been an art guy like his whole life, and like always been drawing and stuff like that. So like, is that been a passion of yours, or like you just found it in your twenties? Like, oh shit, I'm good at art, also. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. My my whole life. Uh, did you see the thumbnail I did uh, for myself for the yes, latest I loved episode? Yes, Josh... Was that you were? Is that Bill Gates? Yeah, it's Bill Gates. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was actually fun because my cousin, who I've been drawing with since man, since I was since we were born. He's he's basically like six months older than me, and we've been drawing and making comics since we were born. And he was always like the uh, he was always this like out of the box idea guy. And I'm, I was always the guy that kind of like bring him back and focus on the details. You see, you see how my artwork is and then his artwork will be crazy, but it, yeah, I've been drawing since, uh, since birth basically. And, and lucky to be involved in like a, my family's super talented. And, uh, I learned a lot from them. I went to, uh, uh, like a gifted and talented school in junior high school for art. And then, uh, after that, I, I kind of, I, I always did it on the side and just for fun, but, uh, I kind of put it away. I picked up music. I, I got married. I, you know, sports and shit like that, but it was always something that I've done passively until, uh, yeah, until I decided, like, I, I saw the print on demand kind of thing come coming into, into aspect. I saw people like making shirts and shit like that and sell them. So I was like, oh, I could probably do that. And, and, you know, got the ball rolling from there and all the way to here, a lot of trial and error. And now I'm figuring out how to monetize what I really like to do. Yeah, dude, that's kind of cool. Sick. And like, also your ideas, are, I mean, some of them are very inside, obviously, to libertarian circles, like like the Nick Sarwark plant shirt is fucking, <laughs> which by the way, I have to, I'm buying that shirt. I'm 100% buying that shirt. I I, <laughs> I, I saw the other night again. I was like, oh, that's right. I have to buy this fucking shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking great shirt. Uh, I block. I did the block. I blocked him too. I I, w I went with the Jose uh fucking position, and just I'm like, you know what? Yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you What did you think? I, me and Jose got into a little bit of trouble with uh, a Mises, the Mises the Mises Caucus of Texas the other day. Did you see that? I thought that was just the Libertarian Party of Texas, not the Mises Caucus of Texas. Oh, 
it got deep, bro. Oh, so, okay. So hold on. So yeah. let, let me recap it to where I left because I saw Texas. Oh, shit, now I forgot my brain. God damn it. It was something about <laughs> the, the the vaccine or the mm-hmm. mask. Or- no, first it was a. Uh, it was in. It was a. Uh, it said uh, you can't be pro liberty, pro freedom, yes. and anti immigration. That was it. Sorry, and, uh, I don't know why I yeah. thought mask. And that was the, that was just from the state party of Texas, though, right? That wasn't the Mises yeah. Caucus. Yeah. Now, if the Mises, well, if if anybody else would have said that, I would give you the benefit of the doubt because I know what you're saying. But these Lulberts, I'm like, no, right? I yeah, the worst interpretation possible. And then also like, yeah, I agree. like how I how I feel about. It. I kind of explained on Josh's show. It, it, this is a definitely like a more right leaning opinion, where I, I'm not closed borders. But I think we should be realistic about um, about like the integration of what's going on here, because I'm on the verge of losing my job because I'm surrounded by people who do not value freedom. They're most like I mean, most of the people I work with are not even from they're not from the country. Right? They they come from like, I don't know, uh, Guyana and stuff like that. They watch CNN because they think that that's real. And then they're terrified that that it. Um, that influence the, influences the legislation or at least makes them bold enough to do what they're doing to us in New York right now. So I'm dealing with the real life ramifications of things like this. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic towards the, uh, I'm not sympathetic. I agree completely with the open borders and the freedom of movement stuff, but uh, I had some differences of ideas there. Yeah. Yeah. So how did the Mises Texas guys oh. get involved? Because that's a fair, but that's a fair. Also, I kind of agree because it's like it's like yes, it's like theoretically that would be great, but in practice, we don't live in that world, so it's harder. Yeah, I'm, I don't really. That's not. I don't really know, dude. Like I, you know, I don't have the answers. I, I don't know, but I way more tend to lean your way for sure. Like I, I have, yeah. to, I have to because, like you said, it's practical. And, and also, let, let me say too, it's like the what they're what they're referring to is the Afghanistan situation. So when, when we're talking about Mexico, that's like these are individuals who are leaving a state that they don't like, and they're going to come through a border. I don't think I, uh, listen, we shouldn't be like stopping them, shooting them, all those coyotes in the cartels. That's fucking terrible. Yep. I what's happened. What's happening in Afghanistan right now is the people who don't like the Taliban, the ones who have been indoctrinated by our government spreading democracy there for 20 years, they're flying here into Georgia on military planes. <laughs> so our mil- my tax dollars are literally yeah. flying them in, putting them probably into some inner city where they'll, you know, they'll live off welfare. But that's uh, the, the monetary shit doesn't even matter with how they were spending money. It's just like, well, we just flew them into a swing state. And how do you think they're going to vote? Right. You know, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, <laughs> LP Texas. Well, that, that's right. And, and, and that's like uh, that's like the trick, right, is we're going to make you dependent on us. So we have no uh, no, uh, no uh, Jesus Christ, a uh, choice but to go our way. Like that, that's yeah. obviously that's the game. A- and the right, the GOP is shit and they're dumb and they don't know what the fuck to do. Uh, I mean, if they had an ounce of balls or backbone, they would do any, but they don't. They're fucking trash. Like we all know that. But it, at least pay them off. The GOP is not the ones pay, and the Libertarian Party doesn't have the capital to no. pay them off. We could, we could spread freedom and welcome them with open arms all day. But they're gonna go to the people giving them the paycheck. That's hundred percent for sure. We know that. Right. It's, human not, action. It's, it's not like they're like, oh, and come to Wyoming. They're like, <laughs> yeah. go to fucking Atlanta. Oh wow, why Atlanta? <laughs> you know, why that's weird, right? I uh, wonder why. Yeah. LP, yeah. Texas. So that happened. Right. And then Jose, well, it was somebody suggested it. They were like, hashtag block LP Texas. Yeah. So, Question mark? So, okay, so that's where I left <laughs> off. Right there. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I said, Jose, question mark. And he was like, yo, block him. And then he just, and then he started it again. So I was like, all right, fuck it, block him. Then the, the Mises caucus hit me up and they were like, hey, do you think it's a good idea to block a state party that we want to take over? And I was like, probably not. <laughs> you should have said, take it over, I'll unblock it. That's what I did say. I said, I'll unblock, <laughs> I'll unblock them when they're not gay. <laughs> but it was like, a, it was a whole big thing. And I was like, oh shit, I don't want to start. I love the Mises caucus. I don't want to like make enemies with them, but. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I am one of them, so. Yeah, well, me no, too. I'm, a- I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, like, it's it's it, it's a valid argument against their shitty tweet, dude. Yeah. Honestly, it's chill out, I would say, Mises Caucus, Texas, honestly. like, Or, or get your boys in line. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right? true. Like, why, why are they reaching out to you 
to be like, yo, chill, reach out to them, be like, yo, retract this nonsense. Yeah, but they 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 want to play politics with LP Texas, and I, I don't know. Listen, I'm not there on the ground, and I don't want to mess with their state party. But we saw what happened in New Hampshire when you play politics with these fucking scumbags. So I mean, they literally did theft, literal theft. Not like not like oh, I'm being ironic or facetious. Like no, they actually stole. Yeah, legitimately, like you could be. They could have been arrested if they got, if they got pushed. They could, for sure would have been prosecuted. Yeah, and then and then and then the person that spearheaded it, which is that's conspiracy theory. Went to Freedom Fest and basically justified it. So uh, plant face, plant face, plant face. Plant face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't really give these people the benefit of the doubt anymore. The, Although, yeah. Uh, what, did you see the whole thing with Archie yesterday? Uh, asking for money. Yeah, he's poor. So. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't think you were gonna say it like that. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, stop being idea. poor, Archie. Oh uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> that was one of those things. It came up and I saw it, like the vegetarians were like, uh, yo, he's poor. He's not gonna he's not gonna be able to and you know it actually justifies his reason for not coming to pork fest. I thought that was bullshit. No, you, yeah, you know. I guess he's being or he, or it's a long con. <laughs> no. so he's playing the long con. Well, yeah, it's working for him because I at first I was like, I'm taking a victory lap on this bitch, you know, because they, they they've attacked me personally. They try to attack my money stream. They've attacked my work. All all this shit. Like when Josh first was working with me, they were like, "Don't work with this guy. He's a piece of shit." I was like, you know, what what you don't even know me. So uh, I was like. I kind of took a lap on him and then I thought better of it. And I donated to him because, you know, he's still, eh, I don't know. He's still a person. And yeah. 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 This is, this is a fucked up time. Yeah. You know? uh, I realized I could only get back $300 from the government from donating. So I will only be donating <laughs> $300 a year from now on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a write off. <laughs> there was a story I told on, on cult, which is true. I donated like a lot of money last year because like for the like for the barstool fund for the businesses and like to other you know to try to help people because like you know I felt horrible for all the lockdown stuff, and uh, when I went to like uh, to pay the taxes and stuff, I was like here's all the money that I donated so like it's a pretty good write off right he's like he's like oh he's like three hundred bucks and I'm like oh like each <laughs> that's it he's like nah I'm like what <laughs> i'm like yeah. i thought each thing is like a thing he's like nah you're, you're not a millionaire i'm like fuck <laughs> yeah dude that that was a trump i well I, I don't know if that was a trump law but trump did pass some shit like that where it really screwed my property tax Cunt. yeah you can only write off up to certain like thousands amounts so it's like oh so basically the homeowners are just fucked <laughs> everyone charity, else did it right it doesn't right does it matter if it's for charity is it the same thing it's I I'm not sure I'm not sure I know that I did get fucked. Either uh, way, three hundred dollars is my limit each year now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need it. He already got. He asked for four grand and he's already over four grand. But That's man, I mean, like, what do you? Yeah, I guess in Vermont, how much is rent in Vermont? I don't know. It's, it's probably got to fuck a bear for rent. I don't know. <laughs> so how, much don't is, know how much is there? How much is your mom charging you? What's going on? <laughs> Hey, listen, I pay, I, I paid you, so now I'm going to fucking... He paid you for that joke, dude. <laughs> he yeah, paid for and, that joke. And the next um, few. <laughs> I didn't pay for this joke, so I don't give a shit. But yeah, it's... uh, <laughs> That's fucking really good. <laughs> He's like, yo, the price of Cheetos went up. <laughs> like, Kleenex, Kleenex and lotion and Cheetos is going through the roof, bro. That's stringflation. <laughs> No, I don't listen. I don't know personally, but but fuck uh, them though. <laughs> I don't know personally. But fuck yourself. Now, they, the comments, the comments on the Patreon. If you can go look at that, man. Somebody did. Uh, somebody donated fourteen dollars, and then they said, uh, they said, uh, yo, where are the racists at? And then somebody right underneath them donated eighty eight dollars. So it was like fourteen eighty eight. <laughs> and then, and then I forgot what they said. Some crazy shit. I. Oh man, Dude, it's just it's crazy hilarious. Crazy about our group of of libertarians, especially like the Mises guys and all that stuff. Like we, we we are still kinder than they are to somebody who legitimately try to take away a lot of people's fucking livelihoods. We'll still uh, donate more than their own kind. On top, yeah. like it's wild, dude. It's fucking look, wild. Look at besides those like shit post comments on on his uh not, not the page on the GoFundMe. Yeah, everything else is hashtag take human action. Yep. It's crazy. But like honestly, you deserve like if, if, even if he gets twenty dollars in a shit post, too fucking bad. You did you kinda deserve it. Yeah. 
And take, he's not, take he's the not $20. Like, he doesn't have like cancer. He just doesn't have money. Is that, is that, like, I'm not like shitting on him for dying, right? Is he not dying? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Like, do you deserve whatever shit post you fucking get, dude? Like, you're an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you I, should absolutely. You should be that these fucking guys are fucking hooking you up like that. Honestly, it's just like to all these guys. Like, even I, I, I legitimately hate them. But it's like, just be better. <laughs> Be better. Just be better. Be yeah, and, and I'm, and that's it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like hate you. Just, just be better. Don't be, don't be such a, a shithead. You know. Um, they invited Jacob Winograd to go on vegetarians. He and, asked me to come with him. And, yeah. and me too. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, uh, should we sweeten the pot? I know that Adam Nutter's going. He said, should we sweeten the pot by bringing top lobster? I was like, you can't afford to pay me to go on. I'm, I'm just not doing it. So here's. So here's um, the only way I told Jacob I'm doing it. I said, I'm going on. But if you don't think, I'm just going to fucking roast them. For as long as they have me or kick me off. Like, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not taking them seriously. I won't answer a question seriously. I'm going to sit there and trash cat ears and trash all these idiots. Because I don't care. And, like, <laughs> you can't get me in trouble. So I'm a comic. <laughs> you can't fire me. So like, yeah. it doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. I, Cause you can't take them seriously. Cause that's what they want you to do. They want to try to get you on something. But yeah, honestly, just, the shitty policies that they uh, support are going to get me fired. So I'm going to say what the fuck I want to screw you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Like, I, don't, I mean, yeah. especially like you're, you're not coming on a good, you're not doing this in good faith. No. Like I know, well, I know what's up. Actually, I think well, I forgot his name. Hudak, uh, the 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 skinny kid, uh, whatever. He's gonna be on Josh's show September tenth. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I told Josh, I was like, "Yo, I'm not gonna draw for that shit." Josh is like, "No, nah, look, come on, man, just you know, do me a do me a solid, draw him how you want." Oh, I was draw like, him. Dude, "Hey, you draw <laughs> him like a Revenge of the Nerds guy getting pushed into the locker by a Mises caucus shirt." Uh, honestly, you know, what? I, I'm between this stuff. I'm between something like that, and then and then saying that's just too much effort for someone like this. So it's funny though, and sometimes funny outweighs yeah. everything else. <laughs> it's you true. Go yeah. for the joke. <laughs> you gotta go for the, that, that's the go comedian for the aspect. <laughs> you go for the, listen, yeah, there's two other comics in this room, and sometimes you just go for the joke. <laughs> you just yeah. take you, you just fucking go for the swag. Even if it gets one <laughs> LOL, that's yeah. what. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do for him yet, but Josh is going to have him on. This is going to be the final thing that Josh, because they did their fake shit with Dick Ashley. He said, this is the final thing. I'm going to talk about this. It's going to be a debate or whatever it is. And that'll be that. It's over. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And everybody should tune out. This episode comes out before that. You should tune into that shit. Cause I have a feeling it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. Oh yeah. So it's just Josh yeah. doing it. Yeah. Right just, just Josh. For yeah, now. Yeah, I he, mean, that's he's... all he needs is himself. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious. Yeah. Just a one-on-one -on -one conversation and, uh, we'll see. I mean, listen, I saw Josh kind of take apart, uh, damn, what's the guy uh, in Arco Poco? He's like a, he's a legitimate anarchist, uh, Larkin Rose. Oh, right. Yeah. Three hour debate. And I mean, so well, whatever. Good luck, Hudak. You want to, you know. Yeah, they're dumb, and they also have no soul. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Gingers and those guys. They, <laughs> they Maybe I don't know. Yeah, they, uh, they have. I, I do them. Like, they lack a sense of humor. It's like, do they though? Yeah. Because uh, I truly believe so. Yeah. Nick Ashley made a great joke, and he said. Uh, he said, I know, I know that you're a libertarian, that you're a real libertarian, Archie, because you're gay. And Archie laughed because that shit is funny. So it's like, it there's funny. something there where under, like, where is it underneath some, somewhere underneath there? I don't know. I mean, it's, if it is, dude, you're peeling back a lot of layers. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of onions, a lot of onion layers, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's so talking about, uh, doing artwork. I'll say to Brandy Love, you have to draw Brandy Love for doing <laughs> Josh's. <laughs> yeah yeah so today I, I like to i like to get my work done like uh, i'll drive my truck and then uh in the if i have like a break or a lull or if i finish my route i'll start working on my tablet and shit and uh so i looked at the schedule I'm like who you got today josh it's like brandy love fuck so i started looking up references for brandy love to see you know what she looks like and that's as far as I got the whole day. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. And Dude, I just, just like, draw you just jerking off the pictures of Brandy Love. That's the <laughs> thumbnail. He's like, this is all I got accomplished. This is all I know. 
So I it's drew what just, I know. Just splooge. I don't know what. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just loads. It's like I don't know. Should I cover her boobs? Should I let them go? Which, which one would she like be? This. <laughs> <laughs> just spread eagle. <laughs> she 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 sees the the thumbnail. She's like, oh, I know that butthole. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very oh, it's my butthole. It's uh, my butthole. Oh, you captured it perfectly. <laughs> I don't know. So here's what I noticed about porn stars: they don't have a sense of humor either. <laughs> uh, really? Most of them, yeah. Take most of them take themselves seriously. <laughs> well, I I don't know. That's strange, so, right? I'll, I'll I'll tell you. So we we uh, Neil and I were on Christy Mars podcast, What Spot that she does with porn stars and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, Jocelyn James was on. She's one of the ones who fucked Tiger Woods, and we okay. weren't yeah, allowed yeah. to talk about that. I was like, "That's the only thing that makes you interesting." <laughs> I was like, "That's the only thing that makes you interesting." Like, what, what? Like, and then every joke we made, she would just take like talk like ser- like a serious topic about it. I was like, I, "Hey, man, I'm just kidding. Like, I'm just trying to make jokes on a comedy podcast. <laughs> I don't really, <laughs> they take, really they take your... dick better than jokes, huh? <laughs> 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 Fuck. Yeah, I don't know. That now I guess I'll have to go conservative because she. So her deal, right? She's conservative. That's what's she's, going on yeah, with her. Yeah, she's Republican. I think like conservative, Repu- which is also ironic. <laughs> <laughs> How's that work? <laughs> How's that, I don't know. Whatever. I guess I don't give a shit. But it's I. I, I don't know how. My point is, I don't know how cool she'll be with you making jokes <laughs> like she might be like because yeah. i know there are some porn stars who are super like like they they're very like self-aware and like i don't give a shit it's like you know whatever but some of them are like very like no this is art it's like it's not art <laughs> you know, maybe it's- i'll i'll draw in a burger or something <laughs> That'd be funny. very very concerned maga burger burka like <laughs> all red people get that joke that's a fucking that's a pretty that's a, that's a funny joke i don't know if people get it though yeah. <laughs> i don't think they'll get it <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah, fuck them do it anyway <laughs> yeah, fuck, i'm gonna do it just for like the three people that'll be like ah oh, that's, <laughs> that's all that matters sometimes you get three people to laugh like yes got it <laughs> that's, that's yeah. more than none <laughs> yeah sometimes i'll just make like an inside joke like on twitter and i was like i don't give a fuck who gets this just like the three people that do get it like we're laughing <laughs> that's all that matters dude. yeah yeah for sure <laughs> uh again talking about just uh debating people and stuff like that we, we, before the show started we talked about like matt erickson and those like post-libertarian guys and yeah all that shit and i don't think matt erickson knows who any guy who i am but i, I, I would totally have him on the show and, and talk to him about his ideas and why i think they're wrong but, <laughs> <laughs> but like uh it, again for anybody who doesn't know who matt erickson, essentially and you know more than i do but like it, he is of the belief where well, libertarianism doesn't work. Like the party doesn't work. So clearly, GOP is already established. So why not just go the GOP route? That's the bare bones of it, kind of. I know I'm missing out a lot of chunks of, but that's kind of the bare bones of his argument. Yeah, you know, one of the, again, like one of his, one of the criticisms that I think is legitimate of his, where he was talking about like uh, Dave Smith and even and the Mises Cox Libertarian Party is, uh, like, all right, you got these people here, right? And uh, I don't know. There's nine thousand people in the group. Not anymore. <laughs> and, well, yeah, no, press F in the chat if you're listening. <laughs> well, it might come back. We'll see. But uh, yeah, so uh, there's nine thousand people or more in 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 the caucus altogether. So now what? Now we have them all. We have them all here. And at the same time, I'm I'm part of the Mesa caucus. I pay I pay monthly dues yeah. and stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got uh, like John Brennan saying, you know, these people are terrorists, even libertarians. Yeah, I know. Right. So to me, when I see it, I'm like, this is a little, this is getting a little dangerous because they they've recognized you as a threat, but the Libertarian Party does not have like again, they don't have the capital to to protect you. The, the Republicans didn't have the cap the, the capital to protect the Capitol protesters. Those people are getting, I mean, they got the guy from InfoWars the other day. I saw you know? that. Yeah, it's it's fucking crazy and it's a little bit scary. So I I think that that's the biggest argument that that hasn't been dealt with. Like, what, what, what do we do? And then today, a couple, maybe two hours ago or whatever, Facebook decided to ban the Mises Caucus page. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you're on Tim Pool, Mike, but now they see you. Like the eye of Sauron's on you. So what do what's next? You yeah, know? but like we, but how else do we get that message out? I don't like we have to. I, I don't think I, I definitely don't think the like yes he has a point, but it doesn't mean that he's right. 
right? No, for sure. So, right, right. I, I know you thought what you're saying. Yeah. But like his like, point is sorry. No, go, go ahead. Go. No, you go. His point is like he's well, he says, like, don't be the martyr. Because he's I guess he's black pilled. He doesn't think things can change. So he's like, don't be the martyr, don't die for no reason, protect your family. And I, he's right in that point, like, secure the bag, protect your family, whatever you think that is, get land, buy Bitcoin, whatever the fuck you think that is. But then on the other hand, I agree with you guys, which is why I'm, I'm still a member of the Mises call, because it's like, well, what, what happens? Like, I, I've got kids, and if I, if I secure the bag and stop being poor and I get land, then it's me, my wife, and my kids on a couple acres until we get ruby ridged like yeah. that's not that's not a good response or a good plan either but there is like like there is something to say there is a risk to it and i don't i don't know how many people in the mises caucus realize that risk that it's about to get pretty fucking real out there you know mm. uh, in general and then when you're an opposition party that's saying the you have the correct message and even now, now you're even building a force to implement it. It's about to get real, bro. They they see you. Yeah, I think you may have said something good about the eye of Sauron. But instead of one, there's like two eyes of Sauron, and it's called the Democratic <laughs> and Republican Party. And, and and they're both like, well, we could put our differences aside for a minute. Yeah, let's let's, <laughs> let's fuck these guys yeah, up. Yeah, let's fuck their shit up, and then go back to our fake fight. <laughs> exactly that's 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 the terrifying part this is not you guys are not in a in a fake fight where well not you guys but us too right when 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 you know we go up there when dave smith goes up there and he's like we're gonna take down we need to dismantle the cia it's like yo that's real shit man the cia just killed like a million people in iraq and <laughs> afghanistan yeah. yeah and they laughed about it it's, yeah. it's like it's fucking crazy so it's like do, do the mises do the mises people realize that you know well, I don't know. The only thing they could do is silence us, which again, they literally just did today. They shut the Facebook page. Well, temporarily, it's under review. I as hope, as of I this podcast recording, which is Wednesday night at fucking nine thirty, whatever the fuck time it is, uh, eight twenty five. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, as in August twenty fifth. But like, yeah, it's it's. I don't know, dude. I mean, who report? Someone had to sneak in and report something. I don't think so. I you know, I think that they know. They, because because the the moderators on that page are pretty good. They deny a lot of the shit that I like would say. So you but, th you think like just Facebook people just went in and just saw and look skimmed through it themselves and was like, oh, but what's going on in here? I think that they listen. You guys were making waves for a long time. Jack follows the Mises Caucus. They knew who you were, and then it's just weird. Like, oh well, you're on Timcast now, and uh, I don't know how many more members did you get. I saw the spike. A lot. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like a. This is not like a fun Facebook thing anymore. You guys are doing what you said you're gonna do. So I don't know. They yeah. they saw they saw the page, they knew, and then they were like, all right, you know, now's the time to take them off. But you're not the Mises Coca is not gonna stop now. Right. That's just gonna light a flame under your asses. And it, yeah. It's funny because most of the like, especially the memes and stuff are literally like like quotes from like the revolution and stuff <laughs> it's like that's what they're posting in there it's like just like revolution quotes or like you know it's like fuck you know uh, uh, or like rothbard quotes or like it's nothing like ex crazy yeah so i i mean i i truly don't understand what the fuck their reasoning is i mean i know Whoa. i i know what it is. i'm saying though what are they gonna say it is is my point you know like it doesn't even matter no i'm just curious yeah, just yeah, me too. I'm curious to see what kind of they'll pull up some bullshit where oh, somebody said 1776 and that flat. Yeah, I don't know. It you guys have the right idea, <laughs> and they notice that you're moving forward with that idea and growing, and that threatens them. It's part of the well. I don't know. I don't know if you subscribe to the whole cathedral narrative, but you guys, oh, are dude. I mean, we we are literally fighting the cathedral caucus, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone. They're in the green party. The cathedral. Caucus. Most of them. No, there's still there's still some shit post accounts like trailing like the one on Twitter, like Big Mike, like Big Mike's terror and shit like that. Like, I blocked him. That's the cat. Well, yeah. No, no, he got banned finally. Oh yeah. Okay. Gadget the cat got banned. I'm actually upset that that Michael Heist changed his at from Big Mike the terror so to. Mad. Like what the fuck? Yo, go up there and represent. Exactly. Tell Tim Pool. He's like, oh, I, have to get, I have to get. I have to get professional. No, Mikey, don't. Yeah. yeah literally that's not what got us here <laughs> that's it that's a good point too yeah. man that's a good that's where 
listen again, I'm just a lobster and I'm just doing drawings, but I think people can't forget what got him to the show, you know? Yeah. I think that's like a thing with all the athletes too, right? Or entertainers. It's like, it's like a thing. It's like, uh, it's like, I'm here sure. now. It's like, you're here now, but like, it's not how you were the whole time. You caused yeah. waves. You were fucking a mess in a good way. You know, like, it, yeah. don't start conforming to their fucking politics style. Dude, comedians should know that first. Well, it's, it's hard to say with comedians because a lot of the guys that you, they'll get to the show and then, uh, and then you'll, you'll milk down your, your act because now, now you have the money. And I mean, so many good comedians are like that. Well, there's a lot of guys who like will get into comedy just to get out of doing stand up, like 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 the David Spades and Ray Romanos and stuff like that. Like they just, I mean, now they're doing it again, but like they were out of it for literally fucking 25 years. Yeah, well, it's a grind, right? Yeah, it you sucks. Know? We hate it. <laughs> but I hate every minute of it. Like I was saying today, like uh, I, I was I was getting uh, I had physical therapy done on my fucking shoulder and neck, and uh, my my therapist was talking to me. He's like, "Yeah, there's comedy going." I was like, uh, "I hate it. Hate every minute of it." <laughs> He's like, yeah. why? He's like, he's, I'm like, you know, like they say, like, you know, if you do what you love and all that shit, like you won't work it. But it's like, yeah, but if you obsess over what you love then you start to hate it, it doesn't matter. And there's like, there's like a, there's like a timeline every comics career where like I'm eight, nine years in. So after like the five year mark, it stops being like fun. Cause then it was like the first five years is like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm doing it. Oh, this is new. And then, and you're like, this is a grind. Like, where's the money? <laughs> like, yeah. like, what the fuck? You know, you're like trying to just like work just to, like, and then people are like, they shortchange you, you get fucking stiffed, you get fucking fucked over, and it becomes not fun anymore. Like, I love yeah. comedy, but like, it, it does become a fucking thing where you're like, I don't know, man, it sucks. <laughs> like, I'm fucking miserable, yeah. also. It's very, it's very similar. I used to, I used to play music and, uh, I didn't do like really that much traveling, but I was in like some bands, and then you go here, you go there. It's like, man, like you said, it gets that shit gets old quick. The traveling, the people you deal with, but the high that you get <laughs> yeah. for those you're playing a song for four minutes and people are into it or whatever it is. You're telling you're on stage and you're killing that high. I think that that'll keep you coming back. But for me, I was like, I don't. I, well, I just that's the thing. Yeah. We're a bunch of narcissistic narcissistic assholes. So it's like you know, it's not even like in a, in a like look at me type of way. It's like a hey, I think I'm shit. I need validation to feel like wanted i need you to laugh at me like that's where it comes from for me it's not like a like i think i'm great at all like that's not where my head's at it's like i'm like i have no confidence <laughs> can you laugh at the <laughs> things i say to make me not want to hang myself later tonight? <laughs> like that's that's like where it goes <laughs> like for me like jesse my producer like he's a comic but he's like he's still younger like he's like a two-year comic so are you at the want to kill yourself phase <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm definitely asking where the money is. Yeah, and he's only two. Years, he's only two. He said, "Hey, Jess, guess what? You have five to eight more years coming." <laughs> so, know, right? Right. <laughs> so consistently booked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He gets it. <laughs> See? Yeah, it's, man, it's just, that's fucking just, rough. It is what it is. It's just yeah. So I, I saw I saw uh Shane Gillis like that whole arc of his life, man, where he was like he was fucking spiraling after that. They had him on Legion a couple of times and, and his and his podcast. And I could tell, like, man, that's such a because it's like, here you go. Here it is right here. And then they just take it away from you. I was yeah, like, that was fucked. And we all know Shane fucked, here, too, because we're all, you know, I mean, I'm I, Philly now. But Sue's in Philly and he's, a you know, essentially a Philly comic. But like, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, you're Brooklyn trash. I'm Staten Island trash. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm wearing, yeah. Am I wearing my Staten Island hat? Wait, where am I standing on that? I don't know. It's a oh, it is some kind of shape. Jesse. I don't know. Yes, it is. Is it? It's a fucking weird ass shape. Yes. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, now. it's, it's just like out. a it's just a turd, right, on there. I mean, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I fucking, <laughs> there's a bigger. I hate that island, man. Hey, Jesse, shut up. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I don't need this shit. <laughs> and yeah. get fucking roasted by both you know, idiots. Yeah, let's, just, let's just roast that for the rest Jesus of the time. <laughs> Two fucking losers roasting me. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but yeah, my experience with Staten Island is like back in the day before they had the Easy Pass. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get in the right lane or the left lane for on the Belt Parkway, and then you end up on this motherfucking loop all the way to the Verrazano. I spoke to the lady. I'm like, I don't even want to be here. And I turn around. <laughs> she's like, I don't either. Um, she's. <laughs> Yeah, me neither. Give me money. I was like, motherfucker. It was like, it was only like $14 at the time. I was like, I hate this place. Turn around. I was like, I don't want to come back Which, here. By the way, $14 <laughs> is ludicrous to get to. This is what's fucking fucked up about Staten Island. 
Hey, man, we're an island. I have to cross the bridge to get home or anywhere. Stop charging me. It's fucked up. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so fucked up. That, that toll... That toll was supposed to pay for the construction and, of the bridge. Stop. Yep. That's it. It's, yeah. It paid for 18 Verrazano's by now. Crazy. Absolutely insane. And, and they're under construction right now. Yep. And it's just fucking garbage. I, I, dude, I hate it. But that's, that, yeah, that's terrifying about New York, too, because it's like, so you got the Verrazano. That's your way out. And then the RFK, made, the RFK will take you to Jersey, and the Whitestone will take you to the Bronx. So you can go up. But, yo, if they want to keep you in here, shut that down, and that's it. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, Staten Island has what the Verrazano, the Gothels, the Bayonne, and Elizabeth. So, like, but yeah. three to Jersey, one in New York. Yeah, ex- but exactly. But right. you see, like, that's that's like the main vein to get yep. at it, dude. Yeah, that terrifies me. I think about that all the time. Like, I gotta yeah, get the good thing about being in Pennsylvania is like, yeah, like I could kind of get out of Pennsylvania without crossing a bridge. Yeah, and and you could probably take some back roads too. You can go yeah, in any sure. direction to like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah good, it's definitely man. logistically a better spot than New York. <laughs> <For> sure, <laughs> well, I think yeah. any, anywhere is, dude. I'm panicking at this point, man. Well, they're my like... parents are still in Staten Island, you know, and they're looking to move, though. They're trying to get out to PA. They're trying to get out to Bucks County uh, by me. But okay. it's, it, dude, it's, I, we were just in Queens. Uh, we did a show in Queens uh, the, the last week and driving through New York, and I was like, oh, this place looks like shit. Yeah. Like it's... everything's boarded up. Like more, but places that shouldn't be boarded up and boarded up. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, yeah, oh, that's weird, because mm. I've never used to seeing like that. My my old route uh, during the pandemic was like I used to I used to like deliver materials and pick up garbage and shit like that in the city. I don't do that anymore now. I do like other random shit. But uh, I was driving through the city when the riots were happening, man. And mm. it's like some days you drive through and I still I see like the fucking embers of the smoke dirt, like because there was a riot the night before. I'm like, this place is terrible. <laughs> I can't wait to leave. <laughs> are, are you are you definitely leaving? Is that your plan? Yeah. The house that I'm in right now is uh pretty much sold. We're in contract. And then uh if it's up to me, I, I'm I would just bounce around. Like once we get the money, I would be gone. I wouldn't even tell my job I'm leaving. I'd just be gone. And that would be that. And we'll figure it out. But my wife is like, she wants to have an easing transition phase. But I told her, I'm like, I don't know if we got that time. You know? Where are you going? I also don't want to say where are you going? Oh, Florida, oh, yeah. yeah. Probably Florida, but it's up in the air too. You know, if Florida gets stupid. I'll, I don't know, look somewhere else. When are, uh, when are you leaving? That's the question. Hmm. So we you know, we should close here. I don't know, within a month or a month and a half, because it's a long process to close. And then, uh, I don't know. I, I would like, like I said, I'd like to sign the paper, get in the car, put my kids in and just fucking leave. Never look back. Right, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I'm done I, with this place. I, I, I always tell, like every time I go back to New York, I was telling again, I was telling Neil because we were we we're in the car together on the show, and I was just like, every time I, I get to New York, I get like anxiety because I'm like, I fucking hate mm-hmm. this place. Like, I because I, I think about like I grew up there. I've only been out of Staten Island for five years, so all of the bad things that happen in my life are happening in New York. Like all my bad memories are in New York. All my bad traumas in New York. So every time I go back there, I'm like. I, I don't want to be yeah, here. Like, dude, I just I... think of all the negative shit and then all on top of all the new me- negative shit that has nothing to do with me, my, my, my personal history, right? Just how it is now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't want to be here. Like, th- I used to enjoy doing shows in New York, like going to do shows in Manhattan, going to do shows in Staten Island, Brooklyn. Dude, fuck, I, I hate it now. It's not fun. <laughs> like, it's not fun. Like, I, I just get stressed out and anxious and I'm like, I don't want to be here. I just want to fucking, I'll rather do shows in Jersey and Pennsylvania or wherever the fuck, you know? Yeah, you know, pe- people, I guess, uh, well, I don't know, family members are like, that's weird, Danny. Like, it's weird that you, like, feel this way about New York. But I'm like, I think it's weird that you like to be here. Like, we're all living on top of each other. It's yeah. all fucked up. I-, I was in Coney Island the other day, and I ran the boardwalk with my wife. And we ran past, like, this nursing home. And I was like, I got mugged there 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that just comes to my head. Right. I was like, I don't need this shit, man. I gotta. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, even even Staten Island, which is like you know, per, uh, certain parts are very you know, uh, not as on top of each other. But even like where I grew up, I grew up in South South Shore, Staten Island, which is like very you know, it's middle class to rich. I was middle class, but like, uh, it was just you. Ha- we had a backyard. We played on the street. It was still busy, but like, it's still crowded. But like, we still had a little more to fuck around with. It was way more suburban than anywhere else. But like again, going back there recently, I was like, God, is there more people here since I left? I feel like they built more houses somehow. Really, like they squeezed them into places that didn't exist. Yeah. And I'm like, this sucks, dude. Like, yeah. 
what happened was like people so i i got in my house uh five years ago or whatever and then shit started getting crazy and people were buying and, and you can't even buy in brooklyn anymore because like what i'm selling this house for right now i'm embarrassed i was embarrassed to even like ask for it and then i'm even more embarrassed that the people are like giving it to us because it's fucking crazy Dude, and yes so then they the people searched further and further out and then they, they were looking in staten island and that was like good pricing and they had land and now it's just congested again prices going up like crazy now they're in Jer they're like oh well we'll go to jersey because you can still drive and they'll it'll take a while to do it to jersey but you know that's well, how well, these the people are jersey is property tax already is like fucked like it's, oh, it's fucked it's up so yeah. much money it's that's what they get you like oh it's cheaper right here i'm like well it's not <laughs> yeah because this property tax gets you in the end but so i was born in brooklyn actually uh and my parents moved to Staten Island for that very reason they're like it's too expensive here they're yeah. like let's go to Staten Island. They, again uh that my, my childhood home my where my parents still live today it's a it's a two floors basement backyard had a pool not a big pool but like a pool in it still uh driveway you know all that shit they bought that for a hundred and forty five thousand dollars they are looking to sell that house for like six hundred grand. Yeah, same thing with my parents. That's they, fucking crazy. They bought the. They have. They live in Coney Island, and at the time, the city fucked up because they they built like they they built these like container homes basically, and they like yeah. drove them in, and you know like the big blocks of houses. Uh -huh. But they have a huge front yard. Their front yard is as big as my whole lot, and then their backyard is as big as my whole lot, and then their house is as big as my whole lot. So it's crazy. But they have like they have a lot of land. And they paid eighty seven grand or something like that for that in in eighty nine yeah, and now they're looking at like six fifties or whatever it is it's it's insane <laughs> like, you know, like stressed out <laughs> it's, it's crazy like, it's like I could buy that if I, if that was I, if that was still eighty five grand today like, oh, I could buy that right now like, I, could buy, I could buy that like pretty yeah. much like you know what I'm saying like like I'll I, pay that off tomorrow yeah but... <laughs> it's like I got it, but like six fifty makes me fucking sweat dude it's crazy, yeah. It it's really is bananas how expensive that is. Yeah, uh, but it's gonna keep going up. Like, uh, San, like good luck buying houses in San Francisco or like Portland or like any of these fucking like West Coast cities too. It's like like uh before COVID, uh we were out in LA doing shows and uh I got up early and we just got a uh we were pretty much staying at Airbnb in West Hollywood, mm. WeHo, right? And it's a, it's a cool neighborhood. Like you know, it's yeah, it's fucking yuppie as shit. But it's a fucking cool neighborhood. It's like, you know, it's a lot of cool stores, a lot of cool places. So I walked to Starbucks, and I just got a more, nice morning coffee. And I'm like, let me just walk around the neighborhood. Fuck it. I, like, it's 930. Everyone else is sleeping. We got nothing to do until fucking, you know, 4 o'clock today. I'm like, let me just walk around. So I went to walk around the neighborhood, and houses were for sale. And these are not crazy houses, man. I'm telling you. They're like normal. Like they're like my parents' house in Staten Island. Pretty much. Yeah. Million dollars. 1.2 million because uh, they were open houses. I I, yeah. I I was just walking in to these houses just for fun. And I, I was <laughs> walked in with this car. Look, look at how I look now. Like, clearly, like, you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't even afford sleeves. What the are you doing in this house? <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? So, uh, no, I just remember just walking in, though, and, like, casually just being, like, so those are, like, 500, 400 grand, and, like, 1.3 million. I'm, like, cool. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> like, trying to, trying to, like, belong there still. Like, do like, I need know? to be pre-approved or? What? <laughs> yeah. Do I need to oh, like? Yeah. Do, do, are you guys gonna test me for being in here right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'll leave. Not because I want to leave. Not because you're making me leave. <laughs> Just grab grab a handful of cookies and run out. <laughs> I push an old couple out of the way. <laughs> a koi it's a, that's insane. It's fucking insane. And yeah. the craziest part is, is like, after you buy that, look at where you are. And, and, you know, you said that's a yuppie neighborhood, but it's like where I am, where, I mean, even Staten Island, it's like, all right, so now, now you're in this house. Well, now dude, what? Dude, that's, it reminds, like I said, it re actually uh, where I was in West Hollywood, it reminded me a lot of actually kind of where I grew up in Staten Island. Yeah. And, and, honestly, it, it was kind of very similar, like, aesthetic. Houses, the same, like, you know, two family homes, like, attached to each other and stuff like that, you know. And 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 .1, you know, 950, 1.5. I'm like, fuck off who the fuck i guess hollywood's i mean hollywood's been fucked but like yeah that's crazy dude you literally it's unlivable <laughs> you cannot live there it's absolutely like, yeah when i buy when i buy my next house if if we buy a next house i don't want to i don't even want to be able to see my neighbors i'm like <laughs> you're over there i'm over here man if some shit happens i'm on my own and you too but like that's how that's that's where my mind is at right now is that 
I don't know. COVID, COVID fucked. That COVID fucked everybody up, really. But it, it fucked everybody up in their own way. Like everybody just did their own. You know, what I'm like like me. Maybe you and I are more like, all right, the system's clearly. We already know it was broken, but we really see how broken. Like you know, now it's just in your face broken. It's like now, what do we got to do to get the fuck out of it? And other people are like, oh, now I'm scared, dying. And other people are like, oh shit, I should take care of myself. Like it just it, something like it, it, it awoken er, everyone in some way. I would. Yeah. I would say. Sure. So well, the some of the people, yeah, the the problem is though the people here that it woke up, they're they're in their first stages of waking up and they're very confused. Yeah, they don't know. They're just terrified. Like there's something my wife, that I will actually. She's terrified of, no, of like, COVID. Like, no, 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 like 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 the whole COVID opened her up to be like, oh wait a minute, government's bullshit. Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> yeah, like because she 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 lived her life as a typical blonde white girl from the suburbs of Philly. Like, she, like, I'm a teacher, and, like, I don't care about politics. I don't even know the president. Like, that was her whole life. Yeah. Because she could do whatever she wanted, how we all should be able to live. <laughs> and then yeah. COVID, and then she's like, uh, what happened to my life? Yeah. Man. And I was like, oh, you know? yeah, no, they, that, apparently they could do that to you. And she's like, what? Like, but, like, yeah. but now she's, you know, way more out on our end of the spectrum, which, so I guess that is good. It woke up some fucking, uh, woke up a lot of people that never gave a shit. Yeah, there's still a lot of like my dad my dad's like hey danny you care a little too much about politics and i'm like dad politics cares too much about me <laughs> right a, exactly yeah i don't i'd rather not pay attention to this shit i'd rather be oblivious i don't yeah why does the president even fucking matter but now i have to pay attention because they're doing wacky shit out there man so yeah yeah a lot of people woke up but one thing i was just gonna say when i drive through i'll drive through williamsburg every so often and it's really funny um, at one point, uh, you remember when Fauci's emails came out and all that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, uh, so at that point they were starting to like roll back these mask mandates because in Williamsburg, they're like very compliant. You can tell that they've got the TV on MSNBC or whatever, like 24 seven in all their apartments, yeah. young people like, like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, I'd say 90% compliance with the mask. They're walking outside, walking their dogs, jogging all this retarded shit. And then they said, Oh, we might not need them. It went down to maybe like almost inverse. Twenty percent of the people were wearing masks, and the rest of them, you start to see them take it off. They get comfortable, and then like fucking clockwork, boom! Oh, there's another variant, and right back on again. And it's like this is the most depressing thing. Uh, didn't the and I'm gonna air quote this because there is no such thing as mainstream media because it's all garbage. But like, didn't the mainstream media just come out and say like the regular masks that we're all wearing aren't stopping the stuff anyway? Didn't they just say that? I, think they just I don't did, even know anymore. Which we all, which which we knew, but like they just said it. I think again, they were like, "Yeah, this doesn't actually stop the the particles and stuff." I was like, "No, I know. Yeah, we know. We, <laughs> no shit. we knew that last year. <laughs> no shit." But like, you keep saying it, but we you keep forcing people to wear them. So like, pick a fucking lane, dude. <sighs> so I'm pretty it's sure they so, say it again. Yeah, it's so crazy. Like that, that. That's the metric that I that I go by because it's like not only are they. Are they compliant? But it's like you're not thinking. Not the, you're not again. Th- e- even um, t- re- regarding to CNN and MSNBC and Fox, uh, even my liberal friends are like, "That's not news. They, they, they should be called entertainment network." Like even again, regular thinker, fucking left leaning people are like, even again, Neil, we were talking about uh, the, uh, the, on the car ride actually to the show in, uh, in Queens. We were talking about like CNN and Fox, and, and he's like, they should just put CNN E for like you know Central <laughs> News Network Entertainment Channel, like whatever the fuck, or like Fox Entertainment, because like that's not news. <laughs> How dope would it be if CNN had like like a wrestling network like right after <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Maddow gets suplexed or something? <laughs> CM Punk, see Jesse, CM Punk, full circle. For CM Punk, oh, comes CM back. Punk is back. CM Punk Man. comes back to fucking Rachel Maddow and puts her in DDT. Politics is pro wrestling. I knew Trump was winning as soon as I. That's a Ric Flair. <laughs> that's, that's Ric Flair. That's that's how he got the title. That's how he kept the title. <laughs> Everything's pro wrestling. Everything can be equated back to pro wrestling. <laughs> Man, that, so all this like everything going on in the world like i've gotten away i love baseball i love like well you know certain programs i haven't watched anything but see uh cm punk coming back the other day i saw the clip of it <laughs> and i was watching on my phone and i almost like cried because i was like oh look at these look at the pop man look all at right these people. I'll, I'll give this loser a shout That's out yeah I'll give this loser hell a shout yeah out. man so yo adam fucking... get out of here no 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 the loser <laughs> 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 greatest <laughs> ufc fighter of all time coming back <laughs> 
Stop, how dare you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Stop it, how dare you? <laughs> uh, uh, on our, uh, Jesse and I do a sports podcast together, Slapstick Sports. Quick shout out for that podcast. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. We just talked about it earlier today. Buy our t-shirt, buy our t-shirt, buy our t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just talked about it today. Like, we talked about the CM Punk thing coming. I'm like, I-, I stopped watching wrestling after the Attitude Era. But watching Stan Punk come back, I was like, this is cool. <laughs> like, I was, that was yeah. cool. It was even cool for that, me. Yeah, it was, man. <sighs> yeah. You couldn't even hear his music. That was so fucking yeah, dope. Yeah, that was nuts, dude. That was crazy yeah. how loud they were. That was really fucking loud. That, you guys cool. you guys cover, like, the UFC and shit like that? Yeah. Or just, yeah? Oh, all yeah, right. no, we, we cover all every sport. And yeah. we joke around. It's three comics. Me, uh, me, Jesse, and everybody. Garrett Monaco is a comic, too. We just, all right. I got to watch it now. I got to watch it. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun, it's fun time. We eventually talk about sports, but we start out. Subscribe to our new YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the, the porcupines only... just become a plug for the fucking slapstick sports now. <laughs> we only have two subscribers on YouTube right now. Please be. Actually, right. they're, they're just uploading this to that channel, yeah. so just go, <laughs> just go over there. The porcupine is actually a front for slapstick. <laughs> I'm gonna dissolve the porcupine as soon as we get enough subscribers for slapstick. <laughs> I'm gonna build up my libertarian following. I'm like, I'm kidding. I'm actually a hardcore liberal progressive. <laughs> I actually con. work for ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long con. You guys are suckers. <laughs> yeah, but man. I yeah. I I just I just hope one day, man, I could get back into like sports because that's like a that's a good buffer. But it's everything. Well, it, this mean, is. I mean, we, even we see it in sports too. Like they even try to bring politics into sports all the time. <laughs> so it's like it's it's hard to fight. Uh, this is fight. It, it is what my dad said to me. This is yeah. last year. He's like, "You're always thinking about politics, Danny. What's wrong with you?" And we're watching the Yankee game. I'm like, "It says Black Lives Matter on the mound." Yeah, you don't I'm see like, that? Everything's about yeah. I'm like, it, we could just play football. <laughs> like, we're yeah. not, like, a fucking ball. Like, we all understand what's happening around us. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. I come here. To not think about that stuff. I do this time thinking about that stuff. Yeah. This is what this absolutely. podcast is. <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing. That's what the rest of my life is. Yeah, I'm just what, trying to. Right. Yeah. The, the UFC, thank thank God, man. They just like, all right, we got these two guys here. They're going to try to kill each other. For... Trump's guy. <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. Of course he's not going to fucking put politics in the sports. There was one point. I uh, mean, I feel like I'm dragging you on long here. No, but Tyler. No, 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 no. Tyron Woodley, uh, I forget his fight against Colby Covington. Yeah, that was on ESPN Plus or something. And, and on his walkout, they showed Colby walk up, and then Tyron walked out, and they cut to commercial. ESPN Plus doesn't even have commercials, so I'm like, why are you even turning off the TV? It just goes to the blue screen. But they cut it out because he he came out with like a Black Lives Matter thing rather than uh, you know the I think it was Reebok at the time or uh, now right. they're doing Venom. So I was like, "That's fucking base as hell, man." It's like this is not what this is about. Yeah, it's- yeah, it's, well, yeah. It's, they're, they're in the contract for Reebok too. Like they have to wear Reebok shit. Yeah, like, and and also, yeah. I'm not interested. I I I like Tyron Woodley. I'm not interested in your politics. I want to see you punch someone, get punched. No, I want to see some also, wrestling. He's like, also been known. Like he one time said, "Like oh, I, Conor McGregor only makes it that much money because he's white." And I'm like, no. No, yeah. <laughs> it's because he's a fucking superstar. If you could do that, you'd make that money too. Like John Jones makes good money because John Jones is a fucking superstar. Yeah, not Connor money. No one makes Connor money though. No one yeah. does. Like, but because he's a fucking anomaly. You know, Connor makes that kind of money because he breaks his leg in half and then is laying there talking shit and promoting the next fight. He's a genius. Like, this, he's, he's a, a genius. fucking genius. He's a genius. You can see the visceral pain on his face. He's yeah. like crying. And yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. Joe Rogan, come here, Joe Rogan. Yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> it really was brilliant. I got to give yeah. it to him. Fucking brilliant. He d- deserves everything that he's got. And I think he's walking around now, so good for him, man. That was... Uh. Yeah, Dustin's fucking him up again if they fight again, I think, actually. He doesn't belong. He doesn't belong in 155. I'm just gonna say that. Dustin? He's, no, no, no. Oh, Dustin, Connor. Dustin Connor. Yeah, Dustin looks great. Yeah, he's he's a 145. He dominated there, but he's at the point where he, I don't think he can cut that weight Dude, again. Dude, we talked about it on Slash Sports before, but like, if you see him like uh, weighing in for the Aldo fight, he looks like an actual skeleton. He he looked like death. But but uh, what's interesting is Jose Aldo is now fighting at 135. Yeah. So with proper nutrition and, and I mean he could afford it. It's just, it's hard. What do they say? Like you, you it, it's hard to wake up and run when you're sleeping, sleeping in silk sheets. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you want to win, I mean, I think, I think his best chance of winning is 145. He's, he's knocking those guys out. You yeah. see when he hits guys at 55, it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same. You're yeah. right. And I, it, 170 obviously is too much, but like with the whole yeah, Nate thing, he and- beats, he beat Donald Cerrone at 170. And it was like, uh, I love Cerrone, but it's like, all right, you know, he's older. He even said he wasn't confident in that fight himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kind of just bum rushed him too. That was that was a little did. crazy. By the way, uh, another f- everything equates back to comedy somehow. 
we we were up in Connecticut doing shows, and we're like, oh, the Connor fight's on. And we finished our show. We walked around the corner to a bar, and there, the actual fight that happened in front of us at the bar was better than that Connor cowboy fight. <laughs> oh, shit. A guy got punched like out of a door, and the cops were like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was a much better fight than what I saw on TV. But I'm just saying that right now. We're like, oh, this yeah. is way more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that fight was like less than a minute. We were waiting yeah. all night. To, yeah. I don't. I, I'll tell you the truth, man. I don't think. I don't think Connor should just don't even come back, man. The sport is. It was like one of the Ronda Rousey moments where he took some time off and then came back, and the sports evolved so much that now you end up with a broken leg. You know. <laughs> yep. Just yeah. maybe. Don't don't box Floyd for money, dickhead. Just keep fucking fighting in a cage for money. And Actually, you'll... do box for it for money because oh, no, that was a lot about, of money. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of money. But I mean, if you want to keep your MMA legacy, then don't do that. But if you don't, if you just if you care about money, then for sure, box Floyd all day. <laughs> yeah. Every time, you, every chance you get, punch Floyd in the face <laughs> for sure <laughs> for that much if money. You, yeah, if you can, if you can, for sure. <laughs> all right, yeah. man. Uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, again, please plug everything that you have and all your great artwork and whatever you want to talk about. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Uh, toplobster.com. That's Top Lobster with an A. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Top Lobster underscore. Um, Facebook, MySpace, wherever. Write Top Lobster in and I'm there. And also, if you want, uh, check out Break the Cycle. I do a lot of work on there. So very excited about that. And subscribe to Odyssey. They've, uh, they've been nice enough to hire me to do some, to do their artwork. So uh, awesome. get on Odyssey and, and get away from if you hate the antichrist get off youtube and get on odyssey <laughs> get on odyssey i uh go check out uh again uh all top losses work uh he does every single thumbnail for joshua smith's podcast on youtube so go check it out uh i was on it in fact that's pretty much the same picture <laughs> that you see behind you a little, a little change uh <laughs> Again, you got to check me out out at another uh, on all the social media stuff. September 11th, Chalfont, PA, two shows, 730, 930. Get your tickets, droptent.com slash events. Buy your porcupine shirts, droptent.com slash store. And check out all my social media for upcoming show dates and stuff. Top officer, sir, thank you so much for coming on. And we will catch you guys next week with, oh, Mark Mazzocco and Ken Crawchuk are coming on. It's going to be a fun PA episode. We're going to talk mad shit about Pennsylvania. It's going to be great. So <laughs> check that episode out. Uh, until next time, peace. Thanks for listening. Find Adam on social media, Twitter and IG at Adam Nutter or Facebook and TikTok at Adam Nutter Comedy. And for podcasts and merch, check out www.droptent.com. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss an episode.